So you think that Sergio Perez would have learned by now, but no. Or is he playing 3D chess? After all of the issues from 2023, Checo doesn't really seem to have learned from the maladies of the season and insists that he could be world champion in 2024. And that being Max Verstappen's teammate is the greatest baseline in which to achieve it. Really? Sergio, just because you were fourth in 2021, third in 2022, second this year, doesn't necessarily mean that you will be first next year. I know this is the kind of stat that David Croft would very much get flustered over. Probably take it out to dinner, maybe a little bit of schmoozing and uh, perhaps some more afterward. This is not concrete enough in which to stake your claim on the 2024 title before the 2023 season has even finished. Okay, so what did he exactly say, Law? Was this something that could be taken out of context? No, I think this is pretty clear and I will tell you right now. Ahem. I've always had a very open attitude, and I think that works well, said Perez, whose main goal, according to his own statement, is to fight for the world title in 2024. I already got second place in the World Cup this year, he recalls. My main interest is to improve one place further, and I am aware of the challenge that this represents. We have to use the winter break to start the season with a good feeling and maintain this level throughout the season. Oh, that sounds like a challenge to me. And as we know, Max Verstappen very much likes the challenge and he goes absolutely balls to the wall. Remember the battle for pole in Monaco this year where Alonso looked like he was a shoe in to get his first pole in many, many years and Aston Martin's first pole? No, Max Verstappen drove probably one of the best qualifying laps of his career and got that pole. And it looked scintillating, didn't it, folks? I was amazed by it. He looked so fast. So if you give him a challenge, he will just go, OK, and he'll just answer it immediately. Uh, do you really want to be going up against that? Look, I get it. Every driver wants to become world champion and to be better than their teammate. That's perfectly fair. Trying to gleam some information and then ultimately out on the track, try and best them and get a better position, even if they are the bestest of friends outside of the car. But let's get one thing straight here, folks. Max Verstappen, he isn't human. He is a robot sent from the Netherlands to crush, kill, and destroy the hopes and dreams of drivers across the world in the pursuit of total domination on the track, and nobody is going to get in the way of that. Not even Daniel Ricciardo, one of the nicest guys on the grid, could stomach it back in 2018. Arguably, that incident in Baku being one of the main catalysts that sent him packing over to Renault and seeking a new challenge, and not being subservient to Max Verstappen when it was becoming quite obvious back then that he was the new Wunderkind and Daniel Ricciardo's time in that role was up. And even though Red Bull did offer him a very good contract at nearly the same time as Max Verstappen, Daniel didn't want that strife and he wanted something else, even though that Renault engine was, uh, well, let's just say giving him many, many problems during that season, culminating in that little bit of an outburst under his helmet. Why Renault? Why not Ferrari? Could you imagine Daniel Ricciardo in the 2019 Ferrari? But then what would have happened with Leclerc? Would Vettel have gotten the boo? Questions for later. But anyway, Daniel's coming back for more seemingly with Max, realizing what he had wasn't so bad after all and making Christian Horner a very happy man, not to mention a very smug one. All in the midst of him stirring the pot regarding Lewis Hamilton's potential future with Red Bull and not future and who said what? <laughs> Seriously, that was a complete minefield, wasn't it? But the point is, is that Max is not going to be lenient with you, even if you are best buddies with him on the social media circus, which he and Daniel were and still are. He will tell you straight, on the track and off of it that if you are messing with him and you are wronging him or annoying him, he will come for you. He will not give you any quarter or any leniency. Because if we go back to Monaco and that whole situation in 2022 when Checo seemingly span, I don't want to go into the details about that, but the point is it happened. Max Verstappen was denied a relatively easy front row and potentially the Monaco Grand Prix win. Clearly it was something that got stuck in Max Verstappen's craw, which culminated in Brazil when he was asked to aid Checo in the fight for P2, he ignored it and brought it up that he wasn't going to be doing any of that sort of thing anymore and that he had made it clear during the summer and that the team would respect that. And that is something that Max Verstappen had rarely seen before, holding grudges to that extent. It came out of nowhere, but you know, it was something that we really should have seen coming. But then again, we have seen moments in 2018 when team orders were given to Max and he rejected them because he deemed them not fair. So sometimes you're not quite sure where Max is at the situation, but when he is gunning for world championships, 
it's a little bit more fierce. You could even argue in Vegas the other day, where the team asked Max to get a little closer to Checo, so that means he can get a toe and help him get to second place and Red Bull's first one to finish in quite a while. Max claimed he would try, but Charles got past anyway at the last corner. You could easily argue until the cows come home that Max was really in a tight spot at that point where he wasn't that much far ahead of Charles and that by doing that, that would have led Charles with the perfect opportunity to maybe do a bit of a Dan Dare dive onto Max and they might have collided and Checo might have gotten the win anyway. There is some kind of level of like, did he really try? or was he just not in a position to do it? But that ambiguity is there. What I'm trying to get at is that Max Verstappen, he's not necessarily got your back because he is thinking about himself and the pursuit of total domination and of course having fun. But he does like a challenge though. So I do respect Sergio Perez laying down the gauntlet, but why this early and why this brazenly? I think he could have said this Checo a little bit more subtly. But what would prompt Checo to even say it in the first place? Earlier on in the same article, Perez mentions that Verstappen is the best reference for him to gain more insight into the car. Him claiming that he has unlocked a new ability in setting up his car properly over the course of the season and a race weekend. Arguably, one of his most arduous. Let's be fair to Checo, this has technically been his best season ever. This is the first time in the entire run of his career ever since 2011 that he's been second place in the championship. This is something that we really need to give credit for. But then at the same time, many people will be quick to criticize that all of this should have happened many races ago. Maybe at the Singapore Grand Prix or maybe the Japanese Grand Prix. That one, two for Red Bull should have been completely sorted out back then many weeks ago. And then Christian Horner could be happy that they've had their first ever clean sweep which is something they've now had. And yes, of course, but Sergio Perez was going through a lot of extenuating circumstances that not many drivers go through. Ever since Miami, when he was very close and he looked like a genuine championship contender, things were starting to go away from him and that the media was starting to turn on him. And then of course, Helmut Marco added fuel to the fire and countless videos ensued. And I do believe that Checo really needs to get his headspace in line. And so far, since Brazil, it's been working. He had that great fight with Alonso. He then had a good race in Vegas. Even though he had a compromised rear wing setup, he was still fighting for the win at one point. It's all positive reinforcement. So you might be able to think that, okay, he's going into Abu Dhabi with two races that were probably some of his best in a while, especially since the summer break, thinking that, okay, I think I've learned some things. I think I can probably go after Max now. Mm, a little bit too soon to judge there because for all we know, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix might lead to Checo having another accident again or Checo being 30, 35 seconds behind. And that's not exactly good information to take into the winter break. And another thing that we really need to take into consideration is that Perez's struggles throughout the 2023 season have given the teams a semblance of hope that Red Bull can be caught. And yes, they have been caught to some extent, but mainly for the fact that they've really not been developing the car since the Singapore Grand Prix when they brought their last tweaks for the 2023 season, just to make sure they stayed ahead and aided Checo to try and get P2, or at least not fall back any further. And since then, all the other teams have been able to catch up and show that it can be done. At the beginning of 2023, it looked nigh on impossible. Nobody was close. Ferrari weren't, Mercedes weren't, McLaren, forget it. Aston Martin were the closest, and then they stalled, they went down the wrong path, but they found it again. All the while, Red Bull was just cruising along. But Perez proved that the RB19 itself could be caught and bested by McLaren in Brazil, but the combination of Max and the RB19, that was the insurmountable goal. And I also understand that Checo said this was his main goal. There are probably many other goals that Checo has in mind for 2024, but saying that your main goal is to go after the world championship when you're going up against Max Verstappen, probably one of the most mercurial talents that we've seen in a generation, that's a little bit foolhardy and it's only going to lead you up to disappointment. There are moments in life, Checo, that you need to be a little bit more pragmatic. Now, you might say that I don't have a winning mentality here, but you've got to be a realist sometimes. And remember that sometimes good is good enough. If you try and seek perfection all the time, it's just going to cause strife and many headaches and much pain. It's just 
life, life is too short. But there is another thing that I think Checo is going for here, which might add a little bit more logic to what he is saying here. Now, 2025. We all know that Checo's contract runs out at the end of next year. That 2025 is being clearly lined up for Daniel Ricciardo to come back into the top team to partner Max Verstappen until a new Red Bull Junior driver can be sought be it Yuki Tsunoda, Liam Lawson, or somebody else that might come up through the ranks. Checo is clearly not going to be getting another contract extension like the one he got in 2022. So perhaps he is just going to be putting all of his cards on the table, knowing that he's got nothing to lose. What's the point of trying to be second best when you can easily just try and go for the win, go out all guns blazing, do what Christian Horner has always said to his drivers and has always respected them doing by giving things a go. Because all those moments that Alex Albon had a tussle with Lewis Hamilton, he didn't mind that at all because he does not mind his drivers giving it a try, being bold, trying out different techniques to try and get past cars. And if it doesn't work out, oh, rotten luck. Oh, well, at least you tried. With 2024 being an open book and his future being left uncertain after his time at Red Bull runs out, Perez is just going to be thinking about himself, that if he can carry on throughout the rest of the season and try and go for the title, maybe if he doesn't get it, but if he just holds his own a little bit better than 2023, he can just show to any other team, hey, I've been able to overcome one of the biggest challenges of my career being teammates with Max Verstappen. I've stuck it out for four seasons with this guy when he's been at his best and I've not completely crumbled. Well, he almost did in 2023, but if he was able to reinforce that and come back stronger in 2024, then great. Any team would want to have him. Maybe Williams might want him. Maybe another team. Maybe even the likes of Andretti or Sauber going into Audi. Many teams closer to the back, or even new ones, would love to have an insight about what goes on in Milton Keynes. I think it's pretty much a fool's errand to try and go after Max again after you failed so spectacularly, Miami being the lowest ebb in my opinion. But he's got nothing to lose. Just, just try and try and gain some respect from Christian Horner. So that means even if he does leave Red Bull, he can hold his head up high and said, hey, at least I tried and I came out of this a stronger person. Nothing that Helmut Marco could say, nothing that social media could say could make me give up. I didn't give up. Okay, fair play to him with that. But I still think that this was something that he really shouldn't have said now when we haven't even finished 2023 and all the memories from that season are still present in our minds. But his confidence does seem better placed than before, because after Miami, he was admitting that the car was not suited to his style, and that Max was finding more pace out of the car, and that completely shattered his confidence, prompting a spiral, which we saw with him failing to get into Q3 a little too often for comfort. It all came to a head in Mexico with that turn one incident. That go for glory that Christian Horner seems to like, going from fifth to first, if he pulled that off, that probably would have been one of the most audacious overtakes in a decade, perhaps. That, if he pulled it off, would have been great. Even if he got to third, that would have still been quite ballsy. But we remember it for all of the wrong reasons. But it's my hope that throughout all of this, Checo can build up on all of the confidence boosting that he's had from Brazil and then Vegas. I've been watching the Beckham documentary recently, and I had no idea that he got so much flack after that red card incident in 1998 at the World Cup. He carried that for so many months. He just kept going. He kept turning up. He ignored them. He rose above it. And then eventually people did accept him because 2000 happened and then all was right again. But he didn't give up, he didn't run away, and I think that's what Checo's trying to do as well. He is trying to just rise above all of this, think about himself, and just go for glory, because there's no point not. I get that, I do get that, but if this were me, I really shouldn't have said it this early on in the game, because it just looks foolish, and the, the stats, they, 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 don't, don't, they don't play in your favour, Checo, they really don't. It goes back to something that I talked about in a previous video regarding what Helmut Marko had said to Checo many of the things that he said about Checo. Regarding Gerhard Berger in his time being Ayrton Senna's teammate at McLaren, Berger immediately realised he could never beat Ayrton Senna since the Brazilian had had vastly more karting experience than him, as well as a more tenacious attitude toward racing and being more committed to it. Instead of trying to fight it, Berger chose just to get out of the way and let Senna do his thing and go on to his world titles when he was his teammate. Ron Dennis also saying that Berger was a diamond in the rough that needed a bit of polishing, but Berger didn't really see the point of being ground down all too much because that's just not in his nature to be. So he was good, but he didn't want to try and push the barrier to the point of maybe breaking a point. That probably did wonders for his headspace because remember, he was going to be the teammate of Ayrton Senna. 
And after all the stuff that Berger had seen with Alain Prost a couple of years before, when Prost left, I think he was like, yeah, yeah I, I ain't gonna do that because Prost and he, no, 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 no. And I'm pretty sure that Senna was grateful for that because he probably suffered throughout all of that too. Berger felt a lot more settled with himself, not wanting to bend the laws of nature and one's skills. That's why I can't agree with Perez's take on things in the end, because Berger is right. Everybody has their own set of abilities and nature. And I feel like Max is on a whole other level, much like Ayrton Senna was. And am I trying to compare Max to Ayrton? Well, no, not in this video. No, 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 no. Although one thing they do have in common is they now have three titles to their name. I just feel that after three seasons of being Max's teammate, Checo should have learnt by now that if you go after Max, you shouldn't be surprised at all that he would throw everything he has at you and really wow the fans in doing so and making you out to look incredibly weak. Instead, I think Checo should have said something a little bit different, that maybe next year he would look to try and be closer to Max Verstappen, try and give him a little bit more of a challenge, and I think Max would respect that. That would push him to do even better himself, and we might get this little bit of a positive feedback loop where both drivers excel. That is, I think, a much more constructive way of saying things instead of, I'm going to be world champion next year. Oh, we are not in that type of generation, Checo. We are not. We are not at a time in Formula One where there are many, many, many people who could get the world title. This isn't 2010, Sergio. Max, he is definitely a world championship contender, if not the de facto 2024 champion already, because I don't see the RB20 getting suddenly worse. Maybe the MCL 37 being much better or the Aston Martin being really good. I, I don't know. That's why I'm kind of intrigued about 2024 because so many teams have caught up, gotten the idea, swallowed their pride like Mercedes, that the Red Bull concept is the best one of this generation. So I'm really intrigued. But Checo, he really does need to step up here because those teams have caught up. So Checo did get lucky getting second place because all of the other teams are so far behind for so many months. And by going in right now saying, I'm going to be world champion next year and I'm going to try and do my best to beat Max. I've learned a lot of things. I think I know what I need to do for the setup. That's great. That's great that he's been able to figure out the setup part, that he might be able to stop the maladies that he's had in 2022 and 2023, when Max would just suddenly run off into the distance, leaving Checo for dust. But no, this is just way too early to be saying any of that now. He really should have kept that close to his chest or even not say it at all because all it's going to do now is make people look back at that when Max has won the world title with many races to spare, Checo is lucky to get second place again or even worse and then go like, oh dear. This statement I think might not age well. And speaking of things that might not be aging well, how about my take on Esteban Ocon, eh? That Pierre Gasly might have the edge of him and push Esteban out? Well, you might want to take a look at that video because it might age well, it might age terribly. But I don't mind being wrong. I find it kind of funny, actually. You might get a lot about it yourself.